Hello there. Today I want to share with you some uh, question that someone asked me on an email. And so let me read it for you. Hi Mauro, it's been a while. Hope you're doing great. I have a PHP coding challenge that needs to be solved using solid principles and, uh, and also I think it involves using the PHP iterator class, which I'm not familiar with. Can you help me out with it? I hope you can help me out. I need to really understand the way best the best way to solve this okay so let's turn the page to the actual challenge okay so here it is this uh, file came attached to the to the email and so it says your task is to create a cli that stands for command line interface script which will read json based data from a specific endpoint via http the script will contain several subcommands to filter and output the loaded data. The comments should be find objects by price range, even price, price from and price to as arguments, find objects by a certain sub object definition. Okay. All given subcommands should only output quantity of objects that are in stock. For example, um, php run.php count by price range. Uh, between 12 and uh, 145.80. Uh, that's one way to run it. Uh, another one would be php run.php count by vendor ID uh, with, uh, with the argument 42. Okay, so all right, let's keep moving. Um, there are a few technical requirements. You need to use PHP or JVM languages. Uh, you can use any framework or do not use a framework at all. Implement the reader interface for fetching the JSON HTTP endpoint and thus work with the offer collection interface and offer interface on the loaded data. We shall see below what these interfaces are all about. Um, then it says feel free to adjust or extend interfaces if needed. Write at least one unit test for a small component of the script and implement logging. And okay, so here it goes, list of interfaces you should implement. Okay, this example is in PHP. And so, okay, so here are the, the interfaces. And here's an, another interesting part, which is an, an example of the JSON that this HTTP uh, endpoint will return. So, all right. Okay, so before I show you the, the code, the solution that I created, I'm going to make a couple of um, comments. I'm not going to be uh, writing the unit test nor implementing logging, uh, basically because, well, <laughs> that wasn't really the, the question that uh, um, Sodic asked me. So I'm just going to focus on showing you the code for the solution of this uh, problem. And if you have a, another question or you want to go a little further and have, have me show the unit tests or the logging, well, I can do that on a later video. Okay, so let's go into the code. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is one particular file I put together in order to um, bring this JSON data to, well, back to me. So that's the, this very simple file, output json.php, where as you can see, there's not really much to it. Um, it simply um, sends a header, which means the content type will be json. And afterwards, it just outputs the, well, I, I simply took the example data for testing purposes, but uh, it's, it's very simple. What I will do with this file is I will simply bring up a server pointing to this particular file to have it run in background to kind of um, imitate the actual web service that is supposed to be on the other end. So let's see how we do that. And um, this is the way we do it. We simply, in my case, I am, okay, here it goes. In my case, I am using the um, port 8007 because it's well it's one that no one else is using so i'm using this common php uh, minus s capital s localhost um, column 8007 output json.php and uh, with this uh, little command what i'm doing is i am bringing up a local web server which uh, will 
serve this file output json.php as a default meaning if i don't uh, specify any other url this is the file that will be requested all right so that is uh, to give a little context and what is going on on the background so now let's go and see what we will have here we have this uh, run file and um, in here this is like the, the main entry point for the for the whole script um, so the first thing i'm doing is i am bringing an auto loading function so every time i create a new instance of, an, of a class that hasn't been explicitly required this function will be called and um, the the appropriate uh, class file will be brought into the project and that will make much easier to instantiate the objects as i need as i need them so all right let's start with the, the, the very beginning i am creating an http reader object and what is this http reader let's get inside and so it's it's a really really simple object which simply um, takes an, a string as an, as an input it reads it and uh, based on the assumption that this um, string is uh, json so that's why i'm doing this uh, call to json decode and I am using the true parameter as the second argument to have the JSON be decoded into a PHP array. And with this information, I will be creating a new offer collection, which is something we will see in, in a minute. But uh, why did I do this? Well, basically this is what was asked specifically in the coding challenge. And as you can see, this class HTTP reader is implementing the reader interface, which is something I got from the the very text of the of the challenge and as you can see it's a very simple interface it simply has the uh, this method the read method and where what is important is it will return an offer collection interface object in this case i have to return a concrete implementation of such interface which in my case is obviously this offer collection so let's go there and see what's inside um, all right so the the offer collection implements this offer collection interface which let's take a quick look it's uh, very simple you, all you have is um, a method to get one specific item within the collection or you can get the whole iterator um, which is uh, this iterator is a, a php class that uh, will allow the well the iteration over a uh, collection uh, it's pretty similar to an array it, it just has um, some more structure to it so let's go and see again what the offer collection looks like we have a well internally we are going to be uh, storing the offer objects into an array and um, that's the, the whole idea of the constructor which will be it will take an array built um, from this uh, json text and it will well iterate over it and for each element found it will create a new offer object which will contain all the information that we will need to eventually filter out the values that we don't really care for um uh, so yeah well this is a, a method that wasn't um executed and that's why it was left um incomplete so i will simply complete it right now by saying just assuming that the index is within boundaries then i will be returning this this object and the iterator well in this case i could have used any any other kind of iterator but i chose to use the array iterator because well it's a simple one and i believe it's pretty much enough for the for the time being so we are here simply creating an iterator based on the array on the internal array that we have defined right here okay so basically we will be transforming an array based on a json text into an offer collection by um, calling the, the constructor which is something that uh, here is where this all happens okay so when calling the read method from the http reader class we will be in effectively creating a new offer collection based on the json decoding of the uh, text that is provided to the read method 
And okay, so I think we're pretty much uh, on the clear there. So here's how we get this um, this information, this JSON information from the HTTP endpoint. So I'm using the the function file get contents, which is perfectly fine for this for this particular case. It it will simply get information from either a local file or an HTTP endpoint, like like the case being or well, basically, those are the, the options that we have available. And in this case, the, the challenge is not explicitly stating where does this uh, endpoint or where you can find the offers endpoint URL. So I simply defined it myself uh, in a way that was comfortable for me. So I'm getting it from the environment variables. In particular, I am using one variable called offers endpoint. Um, so with that, I'm getting the URL and like this, I'm getting the JSON information that I need. So as I have this HTTP reader, I will call the read uh, method using this JSON data. And once I got the, the collection, then I will have to um, react to this specific um, subcommand that was uh, issued by, well, by the user. In this case, I am sticking to the examples provided in the in the coding challenge. There might be other types of uh, subcommands, and should that be the case, then it might make sense to create some specific classes to um, fulfill the requirements of each uh, subcommand. In this example, it's, it's very simple, so I'm not really going to be going into that much complexity. So. Um, if the subcommand is count by price range, then I will use this function. Well, in, in either case, you see, I will be using this function called uh, iterator count. And uh, the idea here is I am going to be using a particular um, kind of iterator, which is called a filter iterator. That's what, what I'm going to be showing right in, a, in a few moments. Um, but the, the idea here is to bring all this um, filtering logic into a particular class that will take care of, of that. So once uh, the filtering is done, I am simply going to be counting how many elements remain after uh, going through the filter. Um, so as you can see, I have defined these two classes, price filter iterator and vendor ID iterator. And where I will be uh, doing is when the, these uh, objects are created, I'm going to be taking the iterator from the offer collection and passing along with those the, the arguments from the command line interface. So as to configure the whole um, filter iterator and afterwards I will, well, this just simply count the elements that uh, got through the filter. Mm. All right, so let's go into what does this price filter iterator look like. And it's very simple. As I was saying, it's a, a class that extends this filter iterator, which is a standard PHP class designed to, um, well, exactly do <laughs> what I'm doing. It's an abstract class, with, which means you are supposed to extend it to actually use it. And then I am creating a particular constructor this constructor has to um, has to take a uh, first argument, which is a uh, regular, well, any kind of iterator actually, and I simply added these two to make it uh, well make sense for the for the particular case, which is to filter elements based on the on the price. And this is the the real method. The the actual um, filtering logic is comes here from the accept method which returns a Boolean value. Um, so I'm taking the current price. For that, what I'm doing is I am taking the current element from the parent class, which means from the original iterator. And from that, I'm getting the price and I'm simply comparing it to the, to the range that was established um, from the constructor, all right? And in a very similar fashion, we can see the vendor ID filter, which is well almost the same. The, the only real difference is how we um, how we decide whether to accept or reject a particular uh, um, element in the collection. 
in the iterator, uh, which is given the fact that the, its vendor ID is the same as the one we are looking for. And so with all that, I think we're ready to see some something running. So let's start with the count by price range. Let me show you the configuration here. So I'm using PHP 8.0, and these are the arguments from the command line, which means I'm counting by price range from 12 to uh, 245.80. And this is the environment variable defining the, the endpoint, which points to the URL for the first uh, script that I shown. Um, so I think everything is ready. Let's hit the run and see how it goes. Okay, so here it is. Let me put it a little bigger. And so this is the, the command that was actually run, and the result is two which uh, I believe if we go to the original data to see how many items are within 12 and 245.80, let's see. So this is one that uh, is off range. This is within range, so that's one. And this is the other, which is already, I mean, which is also within range. So basically the number two is exactly what we have expected. And so now let's, run the other configuration, which is uh, count by vendor ID. Let's have a look. Well, it's pretty similar. The difference is the command line arguments, which is the subcommand count by vendor ID, and 35 would be the, the ID. And so let's run it. And there we go. It says there are also two um, items that match the vendor ID, which uh, seems to be accurate. And well, I guess um, this is it. So now, as I was saying, um, in order to really complete the whole uh, challenge, I will have to put together uh, unit testing and also some logging information. But well, I wanted to keep this video uh, short and sweet and to the point of the of the question. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you have any question like this or any other kind of question regarding PHP or um, software development in general, you can contact me through Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. And you can also send me an email just like this. And I will add your question to the queue and answer it as soon as I can. Thank you very much. Goodbye.